of my video series dedicated to ASE Test A4, Steering and Suspension. It's my goal to provide all the information you'll need, not only to pass this test, but to apply this knowledge when servicing vehicles. I also aim to give you the most concise and comprehensive platform for this content. So on that note, let's get back to it. Last time I covered tire section width and aspect ratio, as well as radial ply construction and rim diameter. I showed you how to use the rim diameter and the aspect ratio to calculate tire diameter. I showed you three ways to calculate tire diameter, and here's my favorite by far. By multiplying the aspect ratio together, then dividing by 1270, and finally adding our rim diameter, we can find our value fast. I explain the way changing tire diameter can affect speedometer accuracy and how to estimate how far off it will be. Although this information is outside of the realm of the A4 ASE test, it's valuable information anyway. This is also very important when changing transmission and differential gear ratios. The 336 constant is a value that is widely known, but if you're anything like me, you want to know where it comes from. some more information on our tire's vehicle designation. If you drive a light truck, you might wonder why your vehicle was equipped with passenger rated tires. What's the deal with that? The short answer is ride quality. Just like everything else, the tire technology has advanced, allowing the tire companies to offer larger sized P-metric tires specific to your truck's cargo and towing requirements. P-metric tires run at a lower pressure, an LT tire might need to run 15 to 30 PSI higher, resulting in harsh ride quality. Getting back into it, we have our service description. It's an alphanumeric code that contains the load index and speed rate. The load index informs us of the maximum weight capacity the tire can handle at the speed rating value. This is a number to plug into a chart. As the load index value increases, so does the weight capacity. We must ensure the tires we install are the same or better than what the vehicle demands. Our speed rating is the letter value following our load index. And guess what? We got another chart. By referencing this letter, we can find out the maximum speed the tire's load value is certified to handle. Although most speeds increase as we descend the alphabet, this is not always the case here. The letter H is out of alphabetical order. This expresses the importance of the chart to ensure proper tires are installed. Located at the lower B pillar, the tire placard instructs what pressure is necessary for optimum performance and tread wear. This vehicle requires a higher pressure in the front tires versus the rear. When setting tire pressure, always ignore any pressure value that may be located on the tire's sidewalls. These are maximum allowable tire pressure and have no bearing on what the pressure should be. Here's how the pressure is determined for the vehicle. We need as much of the tread as we can to make contact with the road surface. For this to happen, pressure is the key. This can be verified by driving a vehicle, then comparing tread temperature at the center and the edges. Overinflated tires prematurely wear the center of the tread. This is because the sidewalls will stretch, pulling up the edges and increasing the tire diameter. We can verify by measuring a higher temperature at the center versus the edges. Underinflation will prematurely wear the edges of the tread. This is because the sidewalls will flex, planting the edges and flexing the center upward and away from the road. This can also be checked with temperature. It's important to know these treadwear patterns and to understand that when you see them, they're not indicating the need for a vehicle alignment. Tires will need to be replaced and a conversation with the customer regarding proper tire inflation is in order. 
The last thing I want to cover is directional tires. They have a symmetrical tread pattern, so they must be installed to the correct location to spin in the proper direction. Here are some of the pros and cons. First, the good stuff. They're great on wet roads, reducing hydroplaning. They also can offer better performance. They do this by offering better traction and handling at high speeds. Because of this, they can offer better fuel economy. And here's some drawbacks. They can only be rotated front to back, reducing the life of the tire. They also can come with a higher price tag, and directional tires can also get louder as they wear. Alright, I'll leave it here with Chapter 2. Stay tuned for basic alignment angles. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. That'll help me out. And uh, in the meantime, stay smart, stay sharp, and don't break more things than you fix. Peace, guys. Thank you.